Amos chapter 9, and Amos is between uh, Joel and Obadiah, if that helps. It's one of the little minor prophet guys, but he certainly was not minor in his message. And so we're going to look at that this morning. Amos chapter 9, and I want to begin, and we're going to read verse 13. That's it. Amos chapter 9 and verse 13. Say amen if you have it. All right, the rest of you, it's page 845 in my Bible. I don't know where it is in yours, but anyway, if you got the anointed Bible, it's page 845. All right, Amos 9 and 13, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman and the planter by the one treading grapes, and new wine will drip from the mountains and flow from all the hills. Lord, we speak joy into every heart. We speak gratefulness, gratitude, appreciation for everything that you've done and what you are going to do. And may we finish this year with a grateful and a joyful and a cheerful heart because we've been good givers and you know how to bless givers. We thank you for it now, even before we get to the end, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Before you're seated, I just want you to turn to somebody and just tell them the days are coming. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Let me just step aside for a moment and just tell you, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. Amen. Amen. Hope you were blessed. Amen. Last, last Sunday's Christmas service was... Amen. Pastor Santino, you preached the paint off the walls. The Lord bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. So I hope you had a great time, and we're going we're gonna to finish this series out this, this morning. Amen. Are you ready? Ready to learn just one more thing. Amen. Amen. We've, been, we've been pounding this thing, hammering this thing, getting this thing so clear and so, so, so concise in your understanding so that there's no confusion and no question. Amen. So I want to deal with this scripture. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach it first, okay? I'm going to teach it first, all right? A lot of, a lot of preachers get up and they preach the thing. You don't even know what it's about. Amen. Pull it all out of context and make it say something it never said. But I'm going to teach it first quickly, and then we're going to preach it. Amen. And then we're going to do something with it. Are you all okay? Amen. Okay. Everybody say, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm with you, Pastor. Amen. All right. 787 B.C. Amos, sheep herder, had some other roles and responsibilities. We'll get into it in a minute. Called from God. To declare a message to Israel and primarily to Judah. It's a message of restoration. He tells them, look, there there, there are days that are coming, says the Lord. Say that with me one more time. The days are coming. He said, there are days that are coming and the Lord told me to tell you this. The Lord woke me up. The Lord spoke to me. The Lord quickened me. The Lord came upon me. The Spirit of the Lord uh, woke me up and, 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 and rattled my cage and said, tell them this. Tell them the days are coming. It was a forecast of prosperity. It was a prophetic forecast. You know how they, uh, in, the, in the news, in the weather, they say, well, here's the forecast. Here's what's coming. We can look down the line and even know what's going to happen next week. And even the week after that, we can look at the times and the seasons and the atmospheric conditions. And we can gauge as we examine everything that's going on in the world and specifically in our own region. And we can say, oh, well, you know, at, at about three o'clock in the afternoon next Friday, rains are going to come and storms are going to start coming. So prepare for that. So get ready. So they can forecast that well listen God knows what's going to happen before anybody knows and he's already got it all planned out and he can declare the days are coming because he's the one who's in charge of the days and the times and the seasons and so he tells Amos he says tell the people the days are coming give them a, a prophetic forecast announcing that blessings await the faithful plowman and the planter you may be in a a season right now that doesn't look prosperous. Maybe you're struggling to get to prosperity. Maybe you're on your way to prosperity. 
And you've heard messages and you've heard words and God has spoken to you and spoken to you through others and said the blessings of God are coming to your life and the days are coming. Well, I stop by this morning just to announce to you under the unction of the Holy Ghost and the authority of God that's on my life and I prophetically speak to you and declare to you the days are coming. I speak to you that prophetically and there's a forecast. Uh, I see the signs. I hear the moving and the elements uh, rushing together. And I see the blessings of God uh, convulging in such a way where it's going to pour out and spill out all over your life. This forecast says that there are blessings that we're going to await the faithful plowman. Now, the plowman, look at it in verse 13. It says, when the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman. So the plowman was the farmer. And he says, and the planter, the seed sower. And the word planter there, interestingly enough, has to do with not just someone who sowed seed, but it's the idea of patiently doing it. In the Hebrew, it means a patient seed sower. So you don't put the seed in the ground and go, oh, uh, two minutes. Oh, ain't nothing. Uh, let me dig the seed up and go try. No, no. You leave the seed in the ground and wait for the times and the seasons and the blessings of God to touch that and to bring it to w- its fruition. And so he says, so there are blessings that are coming. And Amos then brings this sure word of hope to the Israelite farmers. They're plowing at the beginning of the rainy season. Listen to me. There is nothing worse than trying to plow seed, plow the ground, till up the ground, dig up hard and fallow ground when it's raining. You out there in the rain is beating on your back and beating on your head, and you're trying to clear everything out, and just when it looks like you got it all cleared, the rain comes and brings some mud back into it. But I was digging a hole, and I was good, and all of a sudden all the silt and the mud and the mire goes right back into that hole, and you got to keep on digging. Let me just tell you this, my brother and my sister, keep on digging. Because there's a reason why you're doing it. And so there is this prediction of abundance then that Amos gives to the people, and it's portrayed in terms of endless cycles of fruitfulness. That surpass any previous seasons of prosperity. Look, he says, when the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman and the planter by the one treading grapes. So in other words, there is this cycle of events that begins to happen and there's no time in between where it should be. That one jumps right on the back of the other. So he says, get ready for this because I'm going I'm to cause a shift in this thing. We're going to do something a little different now. When this season hits, it's going to be different. It's going to be unlike anything you've ever had in the past. He's telling these farmers, he's telling these planters, these these sowers and these ground tillers. And he's telling them that the future blessings will be so great that the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman. Now, he was just a sheep herder, wasn't he, Pastor? Well, no, he was also a farmer. He was also a planter. He was also a, pl- a plowman. The Bible tells us in, in Amos 7 and 14 that he took care of sycamore fig trees. So this man knows what he's talking about. This is not a novice. This is not one of them preachers who stand over there and, well, do this, and they ain't never done it. You know what I mean? You, I'm just telling you what to do. No, no. This man speaks out of experience. He was a plowman. He was a plowman planter of sycamore fig trees. And so he sees in a vision that there is an agricultural economy so greatly prosperous, listen to me, that one year's cycle of sowing that would, it would produce with an amazing speed. Quantum leaps into crops. Quantum jumps into where They were expecting the thing to go and how it was supposed to come. Quantum. What in the world? That shouldn't have been there. This shouldn't have been that, that, that plentiful. That harvest shouldn't have been that great. Based on what I planted, what I sow, or the atmospheric conditions, what they said it was going to be, it shouldn't have been that great, and it shouldn't have come up that fast. But he says, no, 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 you got to understand. I see it, shepherds. I, I see it, plowmen. I, I see it, faithful planters. I, I see it, seed sowers. Amos is telling them, get ready, get ready, get ready, because the days are coming. And Amos' word of promise to the person who continued to sow, mm. in spite of conditional hardships, in spite of the rain, in spite of the wind, in spite of all the things and the elements that were warring against them, this person, he says, 
I'm giving you a promise, and if you will live by the precepts of this covenant, you will see prosperity come into your life. He's telling them it is God's intent to bring you prosperity. That's a good place to stop and say just amen. Amen. It is God's intent to bring prosperity. It is not God's intent to take away from you. It is not God's intent to rob you or to steal from you or to be stingy with you. It is God's intent to bring prosperity into your life. And so he looks at this whole picture in a vision and he sees that the seasons of plowing, the seasons of sowing, and the season of reaping and of treading the grapes would press right on the heels of each other. The, plow, the, 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 the ground tiller, the plowman is plowing and, and, and he can no, no sooner get done than the, 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 the one who's going to come and sow the seed is like right on his heels. They get out of my way. I got to sow seed. And as soon as he sows that seed, uh, he's waiting for it to grow. And the the one who's going to come reap comes behind him. He says, get out of my way because I'm about to reap what you just sowed. Because why? Because God knows how to shift times and seasons. That's why the Bible says, Jesus said 30, 60, and 100. He didn't say in mathematical terms 30, 60, 90. That's the natural equation. You're going to reap 30, 60, 90. No, 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 no. 30, 60, 100. Watch. As you're moving in the dimension of what you think it should be, 30, 60, and now you expect in the 90, God says, no, watch me blow this thing up. Watch me blow up your box. Watch me expand what you think I can do and will do. Watch me get you out of that mentality, that broke mentality, and thrust you into my 100%. And so vast with the abundance that the harvest and the vintage could hardly be gathered before the time of preparation of the next crop would come to plow the ground again. The seed sower was so prosperous and he was so blessed in his present season that he was already sowing his seed into the next season. I'll preach it in a minute. And the vineyards, the Bible says would be so fruitful and the new wine so plentiful that it was seen as if the wine was running down out of the mountains. I've never seen wine run out of mountains before, but I got a picture in my spirit that tells me it's coming. And so what I need to say to you on the last Sunday of this month as we close this series, my brothers and my sisters, is this. That I've come to announce by the Spirit of God a prophetic forecast of prosperity into your life. I've come to decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God that is generating in my heart right now that there are blessings that await you. There are blessings that await you if you've been a faithful plowman, if you've been faithful to farm, if you've been faithful to till the ground, if you've been faithful to plant and to patiently sow seed and you didn't get impatient with God and say, I haven't seen the blessing yet. And you're saying, God, I haven't seen it. And God said, well, how long has it been? Well, it's been six hours. No, no, wait, son, wait, daughter. I got a blessing so great in store for you that I told you that if you'd be faithful to me in the tithe and the offering, you won't have enough room to receive it. Well, what does that mean? Because I can make room. Don't tell me I don't have enough. I will, I will kick stuff out the way and make, I will give stuff away and I have. Some of y'all wearing my suits. I have given stuff away to make room. So it can't be that I can't make room or I won't have enough room. Can I just help you parenthetically insert here from the Hebrew language? And it means this. When he said you won't have enough room to receive it, he's not talking about room. He's talking about the expanse or the duration of the years of your life. I will bless you so great and so powerfully and so mightily and so abundantly and bountifully that you won't have enough years to live out the prosperity that I bring to you and it will spill over into the lives of your children. Let me quickly tell you and just remind you that that is a conditional promise for sowers of seed and faithful tithers. You can't just grab that one. I'm sorry. That's not 
For God so loved the world. Yes, he did. And you and I can all claim, for God so loved the world that he gave Jesus, that we could have eternal life. There's no condition to that one except you got to accept Jesus. But this thing is massively conditional. You cannot run around and throw a verse up on the screen or on the refrigerator or on the wall and saying, he's going to open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing so great, I won't have enough room to receive it. You cannot claim that unless you have faithfully tithed and sown offerings. So I tell you that for the purpose of clarification, number one, and so you don't get into presumption and assumption, and number two, so that you begin to understand that you can change the, the trajectory of your life for next year. So that you can claim that promise. Are you all okay? I've come to tell you this morning, there is a sure word of hope in my spirit. I am telling you this. For those of you who have plowed at the beginning of the rainy season when it was hard. I know there are times it's hard. I know there's times when you come to a limit, when you think that your finances are stretched uh, and you can't give anymore and God says, no, 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 there's an opportunity to give. <laughs> there's an opportunity to sow. I know when I've sowed the last $300 in my pocket, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. I know it when God said, give that. And I said, but give that, give that. And God uh, Every single time has blessed me and rewarded me for being faithful to him and for trusting him. I come to tell you this morning that there is a prediction of abundance and it is an endless cycle of fruitfulness that will surpass any previous season of prosperity you've ever known in your life. I came to tell you this morning that 2020, if you've been faithful, if you've been truthful with God, if you've done exactly what he told you to do, if you've been consistent, if you've sown in the hard time, if you've sown when he told you to sow and you didn't tell him no, I came to tell you that 2020, is going to be the greatest financial season you have ever known in your life. I declare that to you. I prophesy that to you on the authority of God's word. Matter of fact, your future blessings are going to be so great that the reaper is going to be overtaken by the plowman. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that you're going to deposit money in your bank account, and just when you get that done, and you say, okay, well, that's going to cover me. That's going to carry me. I'm glad. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Something's going to happen. You're going to turn around. There's going to be another check waiting for you. Somebody's going to put something in your hand. Somebody's going to bless you in such a way where you're going to, be have, to have to go right back to the bank and put another check in. I'm telling you this by the Holy Ghost. Amos saw a vision of agriculture economy so great that one year cycle of sowing would produce a crop that grew with amazing speed. Now I'm telling you this right now. Things are going to happen quickly. They're going to happen exponentially. They're going to happen in such a way where you're going to be totally bewildered and flabbergasted how amazingly quick they happened. There are bonuses waiting for people in the new year. There are raises waiting for people in the new year. There are promotions waiting for people in the new year. There's the ability to do things that you want and need to do. You want to go take that European vacation? Get ready. God's going to supply because you've been faithful. You want to buy that house that you don't know that you're renting right now or somebody? Get ready. God's going to do it. You driving a hoopty to church? Get ready. You're going to roll to church in a roller. I'm telling you this by the Holy Ghost. I'm not just, you know, just throwing stuff out in the air to get you happy. I'm telling you this by the Holy Ghost. This is going to happen because the word of God said so. Amos' word is this. Continue to sow. No matter what. 
continue to give. Why? Because it is God's intention. It is God's desire. It is God's purpose. It is God's will to bring you into a place of prosperity in your life if you will live by the precepts of what he is telling you to do. And I see that the seasons of plowing in your life and I see that the seasons of sowing in your life and I can see spiritually that the seasons of reaping and treading out those grapes and harvesting will press right on the heels of each other and just when you thought the last blessing was it there's another blessing waiting for you stepping on the heels of your last blessing saying get out of my way because I got a blessing that I need to bring into the life of the get out of my way get out of my way get out of my way because the days are coming the days are coming the days are coming Let me say the days are coming. No, say it like you believe it. Now tell somebody, prophesy, preach to somebody, testify, encourage somebody, just look at them, slap them real good, tell them the days are coming. Listen to me, I'm done. You're going to be so blessed. Because of what you've sown, that the seed you sowed is not even going to be for this season. It's going to be for your next season. And so sow and give and be faithful to the house of God. And sow into good soil. This is good soil. I said this is good soil. This is not bad soil. This soil produces honey. You say, well, pastor, that's good. That's all nice hyperbole, but what are you really saying? I'm telling you this. You're going to be so prosperous and so blessed in your present season in 2020 that what you do in 2020 is going to be seed sown for 2021 should Jesus tarry. And the vineyards in your life are going to be so fruitful. And the wine is going to be so plentiful that you're going to look up at the mountains of faith in your life. And you're going to see new wine running down like never before. It's going to flow into your life. Yeah, your coffers will be full and your barns will fill to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. I speak finances. I speak blessing. I speak favor over your life right now by the Holy Ghost. You say, Pastor, well, you have any proof of this? I'm, I'm, I'm glad you asked. Because I, I, I just happen to have some. I, I said, I just happen. To have some. Y'all don't remember the honeymooners, huh? Go, go, go YouTube it when you get home. That one guy would always, he wanted him to read something. And he, instead of opening up, he'd go like this. We get so frustrated, you just slap him. Hey, go, go YouTube it. It's hilarious. When we started this series, I prophesied that people would be blessed in ways that were unbelievable, that it would blow your mind. And I kept challenging people, so, 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 give. Be faithful in the tithe and the offering. So into the kingdom. Tithing is a matter of lordship and, 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 and offerings are a matter of stewardship. And watch and see what God does. And then just recently I said, if you have any testimony of this, give me, give me some info. Give me the, give me the info on it. And, and so people started to tell me. You ready to hear it? Come on, you, re you ready to hear it? Now what? Don't get mad when, when you hear about somebody else's blessing. Don't hate, congratulate. 
Albert Hernandez messaged me. She said, Pastor, last Wednesday when Prophet Burroughs gave me a word, I was touched. I felt led to give him a hundred dollars. The next time or the next day, my client gave me a hundred dollar tip. I was very surprised and cried for 15 minutes. Not because it was a hundred dollars, but because the Lord showed me his faithfulness. The following day, another client surprised me with yet another hundred dollar tip. I was quickened to realize that the Lord has been faithful to me as I've been faithful in sowing seed. Since the beginning, going on 29 years, your teaching on financial sowing and reaping has been proven 100% true for Al and me. Thank you, Pastor, for teaching us the hardest lessons on personal finance and biblical principles for success. Oh, by the way, the following week, I just got another $100 tip. Hi, Pastor. This is from Michelle Thompson. I got an $800 bonus today. Yeah. If that was your bonus, wouldn't y'all be jumping, shouting, and running these aisles, hanging from that chandelier right now? Gina, I mentioned this before, but I need to also add to this, this addendum. She has faithfully sown and given and tithed and given offerings and sown seed whenever she's been prompted. And this year, just in the last part of this year, she got a wonderful, amazing promotion and an incredible raise. She went to a consultation, listen to me, for a dental procedure recently, just in this month. The specialist who met with her just for a moment said, here's what this is going to cost, but then there's another cost. There's a, 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 there is a, a bone scan of $2,000 in addition to everything else. But you know, I like you. It was a lady, by the way. Some of y'all got that thing going. Huh? I like you, and it's Christmas. So that $2,000 bone scan, I'm going to wave it. See, that's $2,000 that go into your pocket. You keep that. He said, I'll preserve you. I won't let the devourer come and get it from you. Isabel Garcia messaged me. Her employers gave her a $2,200, let me spell it out, $2,200 Christmas bonus. Jamie Barrera got a brand new job in this last season. She got a, a, a salary that I don't even want to talk about it because y'all going to be asking her for money. If you want to know about it, ask her. She'll tell you. I'm not going to tell you what she's making. Lord Jesus, I just can't wait to see the tithe. Hallelujah. And she just got a one-year scholarship to Valor Christian University in Columbus, Ohio, online. Marcus Ortiz, Deacon Marcus. Pastor, after this month's series of messages, and in particular December 15th's message, and the call to sow seed at the end of the service, Andrew and I sowed as we were led, and both of us received financial blessings shortly after. Two days after, on Dece two days, I didn't have time to, uh, two days after, on December 17th, my boss called me and gave me a 3% pay raise increase. Uh, on December 19th, Andrew received his regular paycheck and his boss personally drove to our house gave him a christmas gift and a 200 dollars bonus with a thank you card that said he could not have done it without him this year i believe 2020 is going to be even greater atiana ruiz and i'm calling out some of the teenagers right now because mostly in churches teenagers don't give anything and in some churches, the parents tell me, you don't have to tithe. You don't have to give money. The devil is a liar. You're robbing your own children. But now the kids in our church have started to give and tithe and to be faithful to God with their increase. 
And so Atiana Ruiz, that, 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 that sweet little girl that greets you out on Sunday morning, got a $114 bonus for Christmas. Now, how many of you know that's a, that's a lot of money to a teenager? You can buy a whole lot of stuff with that, huh? I know you can. And Danilo Ruiz got a $100 bonus. <laughs> Pastor Santino has been dealing with some stuff with his finances and all that kind of stuff. And he had a, one of his cars just was not, he was going to have a lot of money needed to fix it, the, his Scion. He decided, you know, I want to switch it up. I'm going to get a new car. I'm going to do something different. And you say, well, he just bought a brand new Challenger. Well, he got tired of it. You know what I mean? He can do that at his age, you know. And so he went out and, where's that Mercedes you just bought? Is that in front? Where? Up there? We'll leave it there so everybody can drive by and envy you. <laughs> he rolled up yesterday. I said, what in the world is that? He said, oh, I just bought it. I said, can I, can I have it when I get up, you know, can I, when I groan, I, can I have it? But he had this one car that needed thousands of dollars worth of work. And he said, you know, I'm going to use this as a trade-in. Watch. Now, there's a couple of us, we know about the car business here. You don't lose money. Car dealers don't lose money on a trade-in. They make money. I don't care. They make money. He made the money. They gave him thousands of dollars more than what it was worth. I didn't say hundreds. I said thousands. He'll tell you about it. Why? Pastor, is this just coincidence? Is this, I, no, my brother and my sister, this is the faithfulness of God. Karen Swing messaged me. She said, Pastor, I got two weeks paid vacation. Recently, I got a $10,000 bonus. Don't hate, congratulate. And I'm expecting another one coming in January. There's the proof. Don't anyone ever say, I just preach stuff. This is the word, and it works, and it'll work if you work it. Well, Pastor, isn't this, that just Old Testament? No, let me just, just thrust you into the reality of the New Testament by the Apostle Paul. In 2 Corinthians 9 and 10, he says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower, stop. He who supplies seed to the, three of you know it. He who supplies seed to the, that means you got to be a, in order to get, let me try it again. You got to be a, in order to receive, seed from the one who supplies it i'll try it again that means you got to be a in order to get from the one who have you all gotten it now now he who supplies seed to the sower watch 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 will also supply everybody say supply say provision he says, and increase your store of seed. Oh, God. Somebody shout abundance. Somebody shout overflow. Somebody shout more than enough. And we'll increase your store of seed. Watch. And enlarge your harvest. Anybody getting ready for an expansion? Anybody getting ready for exponential growth? Anybody getting ready to see your harvest expand and extend and enlarge? He will enlarge your harvest, watch, and you will be enriched. 
Somebody shout more money. No, 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 you're not doing it. I said shout it like you believe it, more money. Say the days are coming. The days are coming. The days are coming. Say more money, more money. It's on its way. And you will be enriched in every way so that you, watch, hold on, so that you can put it all in your pocket. And go on your merry way. No, it doesn't say that. It says so that you can be generous on every occasion. I'm waiting for some people to step into some stupid generosity up in here and to begin to give like you've never given before. And then watch God move in your life and break down the barriers that have held you back financially and tear down the walls that have kept you from prosperity and move you into dimensions of blessing like you've never seen before in your life. So that you can be generous on every occasion resulting in thanksgiving to God. So that when it happens, you stand back and you throw your hands up in the air. And you open your mouth and you shout, Lord, you've been good. Thank you. Stand to your feet. Pastor, how are you going to close out this message? How are you going to close out this year? Well, it would be pretty ignorant of me if I didn't give you a chance to sow. Lord's prompting two people in here. You didn't faithfully tithe all year. I want you to tithe right now. The Lord's put numbers in some of your heads. Someone just heard the number $500. You're saying, Lord, I can't give these. He says, yes, you can. Do it. Do it, child. Watch me. Watch me bless you. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me increase. I want you to get an offering in your hand. Get a seed in your hand. If you need an envelope, go to the back. If you, can't, if you don't have anything with you and you want to sow, go to the website. Go to the website. When you get home or when you leave out of here, go to the website, genesisworship.com. Go to the website, hit that donate button and sow through PayPal. Pastor, why have you taken the effort to do this all month? Number one, because God told me to. And number two, because I want to see you blessed. You ready to sow? Come on, are you ready to sow? Come on out of your seat, sow up in the front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in faith. So believing. So knowing that he's going to increase your seed. He's going to supply more seed. He's going to expand and enlarge and extend you. The days are coming. The days are coming. 2020 is your year for financial blessing and prosperity like you've never seen it before in your life. I guarantee you by the apostolic authority on my life by the anointing that rests on me right now by the word of God that's generating in my spirit right now to declare to you and to encourage you to know that the days are coming hallelujah Pastor Santino do me a favor would you get these two plates and just bring them right here to the front If you sow a seed, sow the seed, you better get expectant. You better get happy. I feel the Holy Ghost in the room. I feel the Holy Ghost in the room. The 
And I will show you, saith the Lord, that I know how to bless my children. I can bless you better than the world does. And I will open doors of favor. And I will move people out of the way who are in your way, who are blocking your blessing. I will move them out of the way. I will personally, saith the Lord, move those people out of your way. And then I will cause men to generously, abundantly, graciously pour blessings into your life. And favor shall be your portion. And blessing shall be your reward. And so now, Lord, I speak your will and your power and your purpose and your plan for each and every one of your children who have given and have sown. And I release the anointing that's in my hand right now over these offerings. I release the anointing of prosperity. Blessing of finances. Provision of income. An increase of what is yet to come in their lives. I speak it. I release it. I declare it is done. It is yea and amen. And now we give you praise. And now we give you glory for what you have done this whole year. What you are doing right now. And what you are going yet to do. Because we can declare with Amos that days are coming. We give you praise in Jesus name. Ah, We give you praise in Jesus name. And everybody said amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise in this house. Be safe. Be blessed. As we step into the new year in just a couple of days. Anticipate and know. That the best is ahead. Anticipate and know that the blessing you're coming into and the season you're coming into will surpass anything you've ever known in your life. And that if you will continue to be faithful to God, He will be continue to be faithful to you. And so I say Happy New Year to you now because I won't see you. And God has great things in store for you. If you believe that, say amen. If you believe that, lift your hands up in the air and say thank you, Lord. I love you with all my heart. Every single one of you. Thank you for letting me serve you as your pastor. Thank you for letting Pastor Santino and Gina minister to you, especially during this season that we've been in. Lift your hands. Get them up high. And now, <laughs> go in the strength of the Lord. And may the joy of the Lord be your strength. The Lord bless you.